In this segment, we're gonna talk about fairness in classification. So now that we've built out these, this idea of training classifiers, either in the binary or the multi-class case, it's worth thinking about how these get used in reality and what ramifications that might have. So the reason we might care about fairness is that classifiers can actually be used to make real-world decisions that impact things in life. For example, who gets an interview? We might have a big stack of resumes and, and try to run a classifier over those to decide who might be the most successful candidate. Who should we lend money to um, based on kind of financial history? Is this online activity suspicious? And people have even done things like train classifiers to say, is someone a criminal based on their face? Now, this last case is kind of so cartoonishly wrong in a lot of ways. Uh, it's kind of not well-founded in science. Obviously, it's you know rife with possibilities for discriminating and things like that. This is a kind of system that we should not even consider building. But for the rest of these, it's something which apparently machine learning might be able to do and might be able to help us with, but there's a fair amount of ethical risk here as well. So when humans have to make these decisions, often they have to go undergo some kind of training and they're bound by various laws, for example, anti-discrimination laws. And when we want to apply classifiers to these problems, we need to ensure that they're fair in the same way. And so there are, there are a lot of different factors that we might want to think of when deploying machine learning models in the real world. And we'll come back to some of these throughout the course. Um, for example, how bad is a false positive versus a false negative? How do we kind of judge the, the error rate? Um, but here we're going to look at a particular notion of fairness, which is going to illustrate why just looking at accuracy is not going to be sufficient for thinking about how our model performs and whether it's uh, kind of being the most beneficial model that it can for this application. So the big idea I want to underscore here is that we need to think about what classifiers are doing beyond just accuracy. Uh, and so the idea is that if we have different population subgroups, we want to think about whether the classifier is handling all of these groups fairly. So Tian Cleary defined fairness as or rather bias as follows. A test is biased if prediction on a subgroup makes consistent non-zero prediction errors compared to the aggregate. So let me illustrate what that means. So we have two populations here, pi one and pi two. And on the x-axis, we have their results taking some test. And on the y-axis, we have their ground truth performance on some task. And so let's look at performance level y star here. So y star, which is on the, uh, uh, you know, this value on the y-axis here, corresponds to this particular point uh, for pi 2 and this particular point for pi 1. And so what that means is that given the same uh, ground truth level of performance, Participants from pi 1 will score higher on the test than people from pi 2. You know, someone on pi 2 gets an 85 on the test, someone from pi 1 gets a 90, um, but they actually have the same underlying ability. And so the, we could think of this test as biased because it's penalizing pi 2, right? They're getting a lower score on the test despite having the same underlying abilities. All right, now this is a kind of regression view of fairness. We can distill this down into uh, a kind of sense for classification as well, um, due to Thorndike and Peterson and Novick and others. Uh, this idea of fairness and classification being grounded in the ratio of predicted positives to ground truth positives, and that must be approximately the same for each group. Uh, so, for example, suppose we have two groups, and we'll use our movie review data from kind of sentiment uh, examples that we've been looking at. Let's say in group one, the reviews are 50% positive, and group two is 60% positive. Maybe group one is uh, comedies, and group two is horror movies. If we have a classifier that predicts 50% positive in both groups, that's not fair, 
regardless of how accurate it is. Now note that if it predicts 50% positive in both groups, it could be getting you know, 0% accuracy on group one by just completely flipping the predictions, and it could be getting as high as 90% accuracy on group two. But it's still kind of not giving group two a fair shake. There should be uh, you know, a, a higher number of positives in group two, but the classifier is penalizing uh, group two, kind of under predicting the positive rate. So this, the, the, the kind of formalism, um, particularly from Peterson and Novick, allows for using different criteria across groups. For example, imposing a different classification threshold and kind of counterintuitively, this can actually give a fairer result because we might say, all right, the classifier on group two actually tends to under predict positive. So let's like turn the, the threshold for uh, positive prediction down a little bit so that um, you know, more things get predicted as positive. All right, so the, all these questions of fairness, you might wonder, well, can't we just make our classifiers not depend on certain sensitive features? Like, for example, don't look at the genre of the movie. Don't look at the gender of the person who's writing this text or the, you know, the person who we're giving a loan to or things like that. Um, and the answer is no. Uh, we need to be thinking about this because it's very easy to build classifiers that discriminate without even meaning to. So, the problem is that you have other features that are going to correlate with membership in a certain minority group X and then might learn to penalize that group. So for example, uh, in the authorship attribution case, uh, even just throwing simple bag of words features, which seem like how could they be biased, they, they can recognize different dialects of English. Um, like AAVE or the presence of code switching, like when you t you know write half the sentence in English and half the sentence in Spanish. And so the model is very easily going to figure out what group someone is a member of, and then the classification results could well differ across those groups. Um, another fa famous example is using zip code information. You know, you're, you're building a system to give loans and you don't show it information about the race of the person you're making a decision about, but you do show it zip code information. And then that heavily correlates with race and so suddenly you're kind of back to using race in the equation. Uh, and this is not hypothetical in the least. Uh, there was a relatively well-known case a few years ago where Amazon had this tool for sorting resumes that when they looked into the weights of what it had learned, it was learning negative weight features for women's X organizations or uh, having gone to a woman's college was also a negative weight feature for a particular uh, few cases. And so again, accuracy doesn't catch this. Uh, and it's actually hard, a little bit hard to evaluate here because uh, in the case of Amazon, it's possible that the humans were being biased as well, right? So we can't necessarily say that this, this criterion about the right number of positives is even, is even necessarily the right thing. But we absolutely want to be aware of when systems are kind of running away and, and, and doing this without us knowing about it. So the kind of takeaways here, which we'll touch on throughout the rest of the course, to think about are the following. Whenever you're building something, you should be thinking about how is this going to serve the users and what are the minority groups in the population we should be mindful of. And then we've established some of these fairness criteria. Can we check these? And then finally, you know, do we have parts of the system which can correlate with these protected classes or minority groups and are going to cause issues as a result. That's the end of this segment.